On the 25th of August 2021, the First Minister announced her NHS catch-up plan. Can she tell the Chamber how many people were on an NHS waiting list then, and 13 months on, how many are on an NHS waiting list now? First Minister. Uh, waiting lists and waiting times have increased since then. The figures are published, so they are there for people to see, and uh, I'm sure Anna Sarwar uh, will quote the published figures uh, at me. Uh, of course, since then, uh, we have also had further waves uh, of COVID. The pr pressure on our National Health Service here and in other uh, parts of the country continues, uh, but we are focused through the recovery plan uh, on treating the most urgent patients and, of course, uh, treating uh, the longest waits. And just this morning, uh, information has been published uh, about performance against the, the target to eradicate in most specialties uh, those waiting two years or more. So we are seeing progress, but this is an extremely challenging time for the National Health Service, which is why it is so important that we continue to focus on the investment and the action that we are taking. Anna Sarwar. Catch-up surely means waiting lists come down rather than go up. And 603,000 was the number waiting in August 2021, and nearly 750,000 people are on one now, 14 months on after a so-called catch-up plan. And the First Minister should stop pretending this is all down to COVID. When the SNP came to power, there were 260,000 people on NHS waiting lists. Immediately before COVID, there were 420,000 people on NHS waiting lists. Now it's three quarters of a million people. That's now one in seven Scots on an NHS waiting list. And this has consequences. Listen to the staff. Dr Leila Peel from the BMA said this week that patients are now presenting at A&E because of complications developed while waiting for treatment and scans. Week after week, this government has been breaking records for the worst A&E waiting times ever. So, First Minister, can you tell us how many people have waited over 12 hours for A&E treatment since you launched your so-called NHS recovery plan? First Minister. I've obviously just covered the situation in accident emergency. Those waiting uh, over uh, 12 hours uh, has increased, but more than 95% of patients um, are seen in accident emergency uh, within 12 hours. Of course, the target we want to meet in accident emergency is the four-hour uh, waiting time target. Um, in terms of waiting times uh, more generally, uh, yes, waiting times uh, have been increasing. Uh, there has been a two-year pandemic. Uh, that has had a significant impact uh, on waiting times in our National Health Service. Uh, but as I said, I think in response to a question earlier on, of course there are other factors uh, that were pre-existing, the changing demographics of the country being uh, one of those. Uh, over the last two months, there has been a focus on treating the longest wait, the longest waits in our National Health Service, and the figures uh, published today show the progress in uh, that. Uh, we're also seeing an increase in the number of inpatient and day case patients who have been seen. So in the uh, most recent quarter, uh, a 7.6% increase in those seen, uh, which demonstrates the recovery of the NHS uh, from COVID. So these are, are difficult challenges. Uh, there is absolutely no getting away from that. Almost every country, certainly every country in the UK and most countries across the world are grappling with these challenges. Uh, but the investment uh, that we see in our National Health Service and the steps that we are taking to redesign care uh, are what need uh, to continue. And lastly, uh, we do listen uh, to staff. The Health Secretary meets uh, with staff and with unions and professional organisations on a regular basis. And of course, there are many more staff working in our National Health Service today than was the case uh, when this government took office. I think more than 20,000 uh, additional staff have been recruited in that period. Anna Sarwar. Uh, he might listen to staff, but he's not hearing what the staff are telling him and taking the necessary action to help people across the country. In terms of the actual question I asked the First Minister, uh, the answer she was looking for is 38,255 people have waited more than 12 hours in A&E since the recovery plan was published. 38,255. And frankly, people are sick of the same old excuses and this SNP government always looking for someone else or something else to blame. Across Scotland, people are getting the same inadequate answer from this government. Wait. Wait in fear for a cancer diagnosis. Wait in pain for a hip replacement. Wait for hours in an ambulance outside A&E. Wait anxiously for their child to get mental health treatment. And today we discover the life expectancy has dropped again for a second year running, all under Nicola Sturgeon's watch. After 15 years in power, 
After 15 years of running our NHS, how long will the people of Scotland have to wait for you and your health secretary to do your job? Through the chair, please, Mr Sarwar, First Minister. Um, we'll continue to do our jobs and ultimately, as it always has been, it is for the people of Scotland to decide whether they want to, us to continue uh, to do our jobs. Uh, a two-year pandemic uh, for Scotland, for every country, has presented uh, real and very significant challenges and every day uh, we seek to address these challenges and support those on the front line uh, who are doing that. We will continue to do that in our NHS. We will continue to take uh, the action, albeit uh, in this regard, with one hand tied behind our back to tackle poverty in Scotland, uh, to have uh, a positive impact on things like life expectancy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Unfortunately, Labour still wants us to have one hand tied behind our back on these issues. And, and while I take full responsibility uh, for performance across all of these things in Scotland, come back to the reality uh, in Scotland in terms of the National Health Service, that whatever the challenges we face, uh, thanks to the dedication of those working in our National Health Service, it is performing better uh, than its counterpart in England, where the Conservatives are in power, and better than its counterpart in Wales, where Labour are currently in government. So we'll continue to address these challenges. We'll continue to take the steps necessary to do so, uh, and we'll continue uh, to ask the Scottish people to put their trust in us to do exactly that.